Hi guys, I'm Shmi. Hello and welcome back to the channel where you join me today to visit this absolutely awesome car collection. The garage of Saug Motoren here in Frankfurt, Germany. A bit of a hidden collection that today we can explore. And I am certainly taking some inspirations from exactly this garage as to what I would like to do with my cars in the future. But we'll have a look around. I'll show you some of the things that are going on. We will talk through the various cars that you can see, including some rather intriguing one-offs, the likes of the E46 M3 CSL, the Team Sherma E92, and come up this way to the Carrera GT as well, which is a bit of a one-off in its own right with some features and details that I will show you later on. So let's explore then and take a look around here at the Saugma Touren collection near Frankfurt in Germany. Now this is very much my kind of garage. Let's take a look, go for a walk around of some of the cars, then we'll also head up to the mezzanine and take a quick look around up there too. Of course, I've driven out here in the SLS Black Series, but let me talk you through some of the cars we're looking at. The likes of the E30 M3, there's a 997 GT2, we've got the CSL, which I'm gonna to touch on later. There's a Speciale just tucked in at the back. The Sherma M3, that's an Opel Manta 400. We've got the F80 M3 CS, we've got a BMW 1M, we've got the lovely Porsche Carrera GT, one of my favourite cars of all time. We've got a bit of an E36, so we'll come round to that as well. We've got the 991.2 GT3 RS Visac. This is actually a non-OPF car, one of the first few that were delivered. We've got the GT3 RS 4 litre from the 997.2, the 996 GT3 RS. We've got a 993 Carrera RS, something to tell you about what's going on on the inside and the filler cap of that. And also a Boxster S, which was one of the press sample cars, a special one-off as well. Well, so lots of cars that all have well quite a bit of a story to them and this is what I love about visiting collections when cars have a reason when they haven't just kind of come together randomly each one has a story and I've been walking around with the guys and learning a little bit about it and finding out some really cool stuff about some of these and I think I'm actually going to start right here with the Carrera GT which of course is quite a highlight for me each and every time I feel lucky enough to go near a Carrera GT as a special and memorable moment but you might notice there is something from the outside that you could instantly tell is a little bit different and that is down here red calipers from the factory now the carrera gts came with carbon ceramics which for porsche are always nearly without fail yellow that is the first of a few different one-off touches about this. Now, this car's also been to the team at Manti Racing to be, well, fettled and made even more dynamic. It's had a few things changed. So if we pop open the back here, where of course we have the lovely naturally aspirated V10, you might also notice that the suspension has been changed. Those would normally be red, and in this case, they are now yellow, but it also has the addition of a lift system. You never normally see a Carrera GT with a lift system fitted, but in this case, it has been added so that there is a button just beneath the flap there, uh, an icon on the dashboard to let you know, and it has a four wheel lift to avoid scraping the front, which is something that's always been a little bit of a problem with them. So this, I believe, and correct me if, if we're wrong about this, is basically the only kind of one-off Carrera GT from the factory in the sense of having a few uh, customized elements like the calipers also like having uh, the silver here having a carbon fiber steering wheel those were very very rare I think on the Carrera GT the carbon fiber shift knob as well these kind of touches the black with the red stitching that you can see all around the driver zone and the red seat belts unusual specification for a Carrera GT if we come to what I was saying about the Visac GT3 RS. Now, when they introduced the Dock 2 generation of the 901 GT3 RS, and yes, this naming system does get a little bit confusing, they only made a handful of the Visac cars. So those had the carbon fiber and a few more lightweight track focused options, but only a handful before the engines had the OPFs installed, which, well, OPFs, as I'm sure you know, have done a great job of muting the sound. So this is one of a hundred or so that were delivered prior to that. I think in the UK, we didn't even see a single one actually delivered uh, in that time. We come on though to another GT3 RS, I think the most legendary of the 997 generation, one of 600 of the GT3 RS 4 litres when they took the engine up from the 3.8 to the 4 litre but still with the 6 speed manual gearbox. Those are very highly sought after. There weren't many specification options available from new. I think basically they were either white or black with the livery pack that you can see uh, around the exterior. 
Of course, if we go back another generation to the 996 GT3 RS, and this will link to something I'm going to show you later on upstairs as well, but in white with the blue wheels and the blue touches around it. And then we get, even before that, the 993 Carrera RS, and why it is currently missing the fuel filler cap. And the reason for that is it's actually been taken off as a paint sample for the club sport seats, which aren't in the car. These are donor seats for the moment. The club sport seats, which have had the backs of them painted to be in the same color as the body. So that will be coming back, but quite a fun detail and little change that's uh, going into the car. Then this Boxster S, as you might be wondering, a Boxster S in the collection, if I come through actually and just open this up, you will see here it is from Sicilia, Sicily in 2009. It was during the launch, it was the launch event of the facelift of the 987 Boxster. So that is why that is a, a kind of one-off car. So you can see a few details on the inside as well that are unique about it. If we come past the SLS then, around towards this side, the lovely line of BMWs from the 1M and through the various different generations of M3. Let's start over here then, the E30. I'm actually gonna open up the bonnet. We've lifted it slightly so this is a touch easier for me because it goes open towards the front. But inside here, you will see a slightly increased intake, the carbon fiber intake, a car that is from 1985, so the one year of production before cats were introduced. And uh, I rather gather this sounds pretty awesome as well. And obviously there's a lot of love for the older generations of the M3s. And then we can talk about this. Now, E46, M3, CSL, except there are a few things you might notice. The first is the color. It's silver, it's a lighter silver. The CSL was always much darker. The second, if we come through here, open up the door, what are you spotting inside? The gearbox, it's a manual. The CSLs were all the SMGs. We've got the gearbox, but it is entirely, entirely an E46 M3 made into CSL spec. Original BMW parts all around, all the details from the bumper, for example, which has that opening on the one side, everything visually on the exterior all original original csl parts right through to example for example to the boot lid being the csl part if we come open up the driver's side of it inside here csl doors csl seats csl steering wheel the only thing is having the original infotainment system rather than the smaller radio but this is an original manual m3 that has been fully converted to csl specification which is actually pretty cool because you'd have to kind of really know to know. It's also been upgraded uh, in terms of what's going on under the bonnet as well to make, make that exact same total setup. So that's really quite special. Then we've got the guys at Team Shermer, famous for their work for cars that have kind of been blistering lap records at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. This is no different, E92 M3. You can see, well, look at the front, look at the carbon splitter, those flicks, look at how it's sitting, how much camber it's got. And if we come through and open it up as well, inside here, we've got the carbon doors, which would normally come with plexiglass windows, but in this case, we've got the full glass window. And this is a fully road legal vehicle here in Germany with the cage, with the seats, but you feel like this should be taking part in the VLN or something, a proper race. Have a look at in the back as well. Look back here, you can see the quilted floor mats behind the cage. That must be um, quite an extreme driving experience. I just noticed it's got the kill switch as well. This is, oh, need to close the door more firmly. This is quite, quite a thing. Let's come round, yeah, mental. Then we've got the F80 M3 CS, the M3 CS, when they released both the M3 and M4 CSs using some of the learnings from the GTSs, a bit more of a daily car, but obviously very, very capable and very good fun as well to drive, just as is the 1M. Now this has also been slightly fiddled with, as you can probably tell from how it's sitting. It is low, the wheels look menacing. We've got a bit of a carbon splitter around the front, but the 1Ms had that very powerful engine in a very small platform with a manual gearbox, which means that you have to be really on it and thinking when you drive one of these. You don't just hop on board and drive it away without engaging your brain um, because, well, Team Sherma have raised the power and made it a little bit more mental. And yes, it's an appropriate car for taking to the Nürburgring. And in fact, many of these cars have been to the ring. You'll spot some of the pictures up on the wall. That's the kind of thing I love. They've all been driven and used properly. 
Now three more just down here, while we're downstairs. We've got the Opal Manta 400. Now I didn't know too much about this, but they made 400 Mantas, which was the requirement number to take part in rallying. And the Manta was a, uh, a success in the World Rally Championship. And I mean, this thing, I think it's up to 270 odd horsepower or so. Bit crazy, bit of a, uh, a mental rear wheel drive car taking on the Quattro Audis at the time. We of course have the Ferrari 458 Speciale, the last naturally aspirated 458 or naturally aspirated V8 from Ferrari as it's famously known um, with its fantastic sound and feel uh, and excitement when driving it. And if we come past the 458, we also have the 997 GT2 Porsche. So a big mix of special GT Porsches, the 997 GT2s based on the turbos. You can see the intakes for cooling from the turbo engine uh, at the back quite different to the uh, naturally aspirated engine of the 458 Speciale. And if you're wondering, by the way, Saug Motoren, the name itself, literally means naturally aspirated, hence why most of the cars in here are indeed NA-engined cars. Just come through, just you can see the Saug Motoren name there. Apologies for my German pronunciation. But we've also got plenty of other really nice things in here. For example, go-kart on display, some tires. This rear bench seat made from the E36 3 Series which is also pretty cool, perfect kind of man cave piece to have. And then we've got a GM small block V8 engine that's been made into a coffee table. And I love those kind of details. This is exactly the kind of thing I would really like to have in my future man cave. So the cars down here, all very, very nice. But let me head on upstairs then, I'm gonna show you what's going on up there. Leaving the cars downstairs then for a moment, come up here. Now this is exactly what I dream of having in the setup for the Schmuseum in the future. Some awesome memorabilia, a great view over the cars as well downstairs. Just have a look at all of that. Super, super cool. And then up here we've got the model cars, we've got the, uh, the track as well to drive them around on, lots of bits and pieces all around. TV currently with the N24 running, we've got the Lego Technic uh, GT3 RS over that side too. Nice bar that we've got here unusual. This is all the kind of stuff that I'm absolutely fascinated by because again, memorabilia tells stories, the things you accumulate over time. If we come around here, we've got a, a touring version of the GT3 RS. Like I said, we come up and have a look at some of these. The white with the blue, same spec as the car down below. And again, a few more just over here as well. In the various scales, 143s, the 118s. I love my model cars. So those are really nice, especially when they match with the full-size car right down below. But yes, this is, this is the kind of thing that I always find really, really cool to browse around. I mean, look in here, oh, McLaren F1. Dream, hey, GT3 RS 4 litre Carrera GT, all things matching to the specs of the real cars that sit down below. And I think talking about the cars below, I would like to show you actually what I was saying about this lift system on the Carrera GT. I know it sounds unusual, but I've never seen one with that before. <laughs> show you what is going on here with the lift system. Fascinating to watch, eh? Carrera GT lifting up. Obviously the benefits of this are that the front splitter can clear over any issues. In fact, it just went down at the back and it's going down at the front as well. You can watch it in motion as it happens. All very, very beneficial for driving a car like this. <laughs> out in the real world and it sounds insane as well. Pretty cool, hey? And what a collection this is. The Porsches, the BMWs, all around us and all really, really interesting cars as well. So awesome to visit. A huge thanks to Saug Motor. And I'll pop down the link down below if you'd like to follow over on Instagram to see some more of these cars and more of what's going on. Maybe with something quite interesting as well to arrive in the not too distant future. For today though, that is all. Thank you very much as always guys for watching. I appreciate your support an awful lot. For now, onwards and some inspiration for the future garage for my cars as well. So that's it and I'll see you again very soon. Cheers.